Well, as we come on air this afternoon, crews are working to contain an apartment fire in Little Rock. Thank you for choosing us. I'm Journey Taylor. We want to waste no time getting you out to the scene. THV 11's Brooke Buckner has spent most of the morning there finding out what has happened. Brooke, what can you share with us at this time? Hey, Journey. Yeah, like you said, fire crews are still out here at the scene at the villas on 65th apartment complex here in Little Rock and take a look behind me. It looks like they're just now starting to wrap things up a bit. Now I did catch up with one of the fire captains here on the scene and he tells me there aren't any reported injuries, thankfully, and they came around 815 this morning to contain it. But once it spread to the roof, it spread quickly. Now I did catch up with one tenant who says he woke up to firefighters kicking down his door, telling him and his family to evacuate. And I had ran and got my cousin and my brother duck and I told him that oh, it was a fire and that we got out of there real fast. And now it looks like the road here on 65th is back open. It has been closed for the past few hours. Also, fire marshals are on the scene trying to investigate what actually caused this fire. So at this moment, we don't have details on that. But as we get more information, we'll update you on air and online at THV11.com. Reporting in Little Rock, Brooke Buckner, THV11 News. Well, good afternoon to you. We are already at 92 degrees and the heat index value is 103 to 105 already in central Arkansas. I have issued a THV 11 weather impact alert for today, tomorrow and Friday. Now those are going to be valid 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those are going to be impactful during the peak heat index times and that's usually in the afternoon late morning 110 to 115 is what we could feel out there for the next three days so making sure we limit that time outdoors and make sure you're drinking that water stay hydrated easy things like wearing light colored clothing just taking some breaks and any activity you do have do in the early mornings if you can we are looking for this to continue for today and tomorrow the National Weather Service has issued the heat advisory and excessive heat warning for again today and tomorrow now they haven't done that quite yet for Friday, but I do expect temperatures to soar really close to 100, if not at 100 by Friday, and we're going to see similar conditions. So that feels like temperature. Well, it's going to be 110 and above for the next three days or so, but relief is headed our way. We've got a little bit of a frontal boundary pushing it our way. It's going to cool us off just a little bit, and by the weekend, we will be back down into the mid 90s. But stay with me. We're going to talk more about your day and what you can expect for the next few days coming up in a few minutes. Tracy, thank you. Well, students in Pine Bluff are back in the classrooms today, and it's a bit earlier than usual thanks to new calendar changes across the district. The Pine Bluff School Board voted earlier this year to implement a year round calendar, giving students more breaks and longer school days. Also new for the district this year, new safety prevention measures. Superintendent Jennifer Barbary says they're working to be proactive to ensure a safe environment for everyone. Every campus will have a certified security officer that will they they will that means that they can um, carry a weapon, but mostly it's that they are um, here to be a presence and get to know the students so that we do not have the concerns that other places might. Now in the midst of changes, the old high school is still being torn down. The district plans to rebuild newer facilities set to open for the 2026 2027 school year. Now, as kids in Pine Bluff get back to school, a reminder that Little Rock School District starts in less than two weeks. The first bell rings August 12th. We have those start and end times on your screens right now. Elementary, which is K through 8 school, starts at 7.40 a.m. and lets out at 2.55, while high school starts at 8.45 in the morning and will end at 4 o'clock. As students head back to the classroom, more places are taking precaution when it comes to online activity. The Boys and Girls Club tells us that they are constantly looking to make sure your child doesn't end up on the wrong side of the web. Directors with the organization say while the computers can help with learning, it doesn't stop them from going the extra mile to protect your kids from online danger. Little Rock has a lot of kidnappings, a lot of sexual assaults, a lot of cases, so we make sure that they don't communicate with other people because of their safety and our safety. Now, as a parent or guardian, when class is not in session, it's still important to set healthy boundaries for online use. Try talking to other parents or your child's school and remain calm when approaching the topic so it's easier to lay the ground rules.
Well, this afternoon we're learning of additional charges filed against the accused Fordyce grocery store shooter. Police named Travis Posey as the shooter in last month's mass shooting. An additional capital charge murder charge was recently added, bringing the total charges to four counts of capital murder and 11 counts of attempted murder. This afternoon, Posey remains behind bars without bond, and so far a court date has not been announced, but the case is assigned to an El Dorado judge. We're also following the case of Amber Waterman, the woman accused of killing a pregnant woman and her unborn child. Just hours ago, we learned Waterman entered a guilty plea in federal court. With that, she admits to kidnapping Ashley Bush back in 2022, killing her while trying to take her unborn child. Now, Arkansas lawyers are trying to determine whether Waterman can still be prosecuted at the state level. Um, I feel confident that, that we should be able to proceed based upon the differences, um, but we're gonna have to go through that and answer those questions anyway um, through litigation in court. Waterman will appear in federal court for sentencing October 15th, facing a maximum of life in prison. She'll stand by for a Benton County Court in October 28th and risk facing the death penalty. We're turning now to construction plans along Markham Road in Little Rock. Drivers will soon witness the four lane stretch narrow down to just three lanes. It's all a part of the city's Markham Road Street Diet. According to Little Rock Public Works, they're working to put up sidewalks to make the area more safe. While it means cutting down some of the lanes, directors tell us they hope it'll provide improvements to your driving experience. We're reducing some of your decision making that you have to do there. Uh, let's say westbound on Markham and you're in the outside lane, uh, that lane can only continue right and go up, Mar up Kavanaugh. There, there's not the option to go straight ahead. So it's reducing some of those conflict points. Phase one of the big plans should get up and underway later this year. Well, voters in Little Rock will have one more thing to decide on this November following a recent decision from the city's board last night. For months, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. had been pushing to raise the sales tax in Little Rock. Last night, he succeeded with getting city directors on board with bringing it to a public vote. It came with a bit of compromise, though, as money that was supposed to help build a new sports complex will instead be used to improve infrastructure, a move that's receiving mixed reviews. We have to pay to be here. We have to pay to have improvements. We have to pay to have the entertainment, the life that we want. I rarely play tournaments with my girls in Little Rock because we don't have a sports complex to house the 10, 20, 30, sometimes 50 teams. All but one of the city directors decided to approve putting the measure on the ballot for you to decide this November. And with each passing day, we inch closer to the Democratic Convention. Natalie Brand brings you new details on the campaign trail as Vice President Kamala Harris narrows down who will join her at the top of the ticket. Hip-hop star Megan Thee Stallion revved up the crowd for Vice President Kamala Harris at a rally in Georgia Tuesday night that drew 10,000. A younger person finally at the table bringing energy, bringing excitement, bringing joy back into politics makes a huge difference. Next week, Harris plans to be back in the battleground state with her new running mate, a name expected to be announced by Monday. Their first rally together is scheduled in Pennsylvania. The vice president has a very deeply personal decision to make right now. I trust she will make that decision on her own terms when she is ready. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro is on the short list, along with Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. This is a big crowd. Pennsylvania is a top prize for both campaigns, and former President Donald Trump will be back there tonight for the first time since the assassination attempt earlier this month. But first, he addresses black journalists in Chicago as part of an appeal to black voters. Black people are losing jobs. They were doing so much better under Trump. People are coming in and undercutting them and taking their jobs. Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, campaigning in Nevada Tuesday, focused his attacks on immigration policy.
Kamala Harris's vision is open American borders and closed American factories. Fans will rally in Arizona tonight before touring the southern border Thursday. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Temperatures are high, which means you might need to grab your water bottle. Our Verified team shares how to keep it clean, though, to avoid getting sick after the break. And those heat index values are already in the triple, triple digits, and we're just at the noon hour. Stay with me. We're going to talk about our THP 11 weather impact alert and how you can affect this heat to last and how long. 